all of this frozen tundra that I have good news. On one day this week, something was said about 40 and 50 degree weather. Yes. So that is the good news, one of the good news pieces I have for you. We welcome you, if you especially, if you are a visitor this morning. Thank you for choosing to come our way, and we pray this will be a special and meaningful time for you. There are several announcements in the bulletin that we want to make you aware of. Over the last several weeks, we have been putting in the bulletin a, a picture and a program that is to be at First Presbyterian uh, Bloomington on the uh, 28th of February and the 1st of March with Nadia Boltz Weber. And Nadia is a well-known Lutheran pastor in Colorado and uh, you may be uh, a little surprised that Nadia uh, is uh, not your traditional looking new Lutheran minister, <laughs> but uh, she has something relevant to say to today's, uh, today's world and today's church. In fact, she's probably done more than any other pastor in recent times to poke therapeutic fun at the misdemeanors and flaws of overly churched Christianity and Christians. So take a look at the schedule. It is Friday night beginning at 7 o'clock and then all day on Saturday at First Pres in Bloomington. Also next Wednesday, Wednesday week, uh, I think the date is the 28th, the cluster is meeting, the North Central Region, and that will be at the Spencer Presbyterian. Why would we ask you to go to Spencer Presbyterian on Wednesday for a 10 o'clock meeting? Well, primarily because we are a connectional church. We are connected with our Presbyterian brothers and sisters. And at that meeting, me, he will be able to come and to perhaps bring some students and to present that program for us uh, on Wednesday at, that, uh, at Spencer Presbyterian. Pay attention to that. And then also in this bulletin, there, <coughs> there is a, uh, uh, a rundown of all of our Lenten activities, services, Bible studies, which begin on Ash Wednesday. Uh, March the 5th. So please take note of those. Take your calendar and begin uh, mapping out the things that you don't want to miss as Lent approaches. What other announcements do you want us to be aware of? Oh, Manora, how's she doing? Vera? Vera's yes, mother. Mom. Yes, Vera's mom, Nora, is. Uh, um, she, she, she probably will be out of the hospital on Wednesday, but has done extremely well, and uh, uh, Jan can fill us in a little bit more during our prayer time, but thank you. She is much better and uh, has, has progressed wonderfully. So, Colleen. Next, I want to introduce you to my daughter, Kathleen, and my granddaughter, Emily. Kathleen and Emily. And I know that you know all these folks, so good to welcome you. Thanks for being here this morning. Yes. Sarah. Yeah. I know that you all know my son. I've at least heard of my son Ruben, and um, he's had kind of a rough time. This congregation prayed him through his cancer. And he was healed, and he's 35 now. And he's worked very hard in the last few years to get himself into a position where he could get a job that he liked, and he did. He got a job working as a ranger in Yosemite National Park. Very good news. Thank you. And prayers for Reuben as he makes the transition to Yosemite sometime this summer. And for, and for Sarah. 
Yes. Deacon's meeting after church. Deacon's meeting after church. In the parlor. And the elder meeting uh, called the session will be this coming Wednesday evening. So Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, that with that too. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Wednesday. Nice Tuesday. Bible study is Tuesday. It's after after the Bible study. They change it on you. <laughs> I'm telling you, it keeps you on your toes. It's Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so hit. Glad this. to know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else that uh, uh, we need to know about before the time comes? Any more surprises? Let's prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs> silence allow God to begin to speak to your heart and direct you toward God's peace.
morning. Morning. Call to worship. This week we have been undoubtedly bumped along lower path holes of impatient, but God has smoothed out our lives with his wisdom. When we have lived in the hollow of ho hopelessness, we has transformed, he has transformed us with his joy. When we have wandered the lonely valleys of grief and death, he has been beside us, and together in this worship through one another, God stabilizes our faith. Together we are warmly welcomed into worship. As we offer a welcome to strangers and friends, as we are embraced in their kindness, we choose to be people of life and blessings. As we serve others in God's names, as we receive blessings from those we do not know, we choose to walk in God's way. As we forgive those who have hurt us, as we reach out to those we have harmed, we choose to be reconciled to our sisters and brothers. Please, um, let's sing if morning has broken in page 469. steps we take, God remains forgiving and gracious. Let us come to our God speaking honestly about our lives as we pray. How often we make the wrong choices, God, God our lives. lives. We look at others through the prism of lust, distorting who they really are. We let our way of feeling and suspicion hurt. We talk about harmful words like so many snowballs on the winter's day. We would rather insult those around us than to lift them up. Have mercy on us for forgiving God. May we set aside our own intentions to be united in common worship, common service, and common purpose as we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Assurance of pardon. Christ came so we might be healed by God's tender touch. Christ came so we might be reconciled to one another. Thanks be to God, as this he has inspired me, we will choose to be God's people. Amen. Amen. Passing of peace, the Lord be with you. And also be with you. Let us share peace with one another. Hi, welcome back. I'll see you guys. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm a Susu. We were in social studies, we were learning about the Panama Canal, I just saw a picture. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 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 
Pepina, can you help me hide there and take a picture of it? Picture of it. Just picture of it. Can you score? We have a special guest conductor today. Can I have Miriam stand up here? Oh. <laughs>
Choir, what an awesome job and instrumentalist. Thank you. I know that you think that the good looking person beside me is uh, <laughs> the person in the bulletin, uh, Mallory, the, uh, uh, the uh, Miss, Indi Miss Indiana University, but she was unable, she had some scheduling snafus or some logistical snafus, and this isn't Miss Indiana University. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Indiana University. <laughs> He did want a white robe, but uh, <laughs> anyway, John, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm so glad I under understand you so well. But a special thanks to Carissa and to Jiyun who pulled together at the last minute and were flexible and able to, to do what they do so well. We are blessed, and we should let them know that. As we think prayerfully of those, not only in the bulletin, but those that you will be mentioning, please continue to remember uh, Nora, who is, of course, Vera's mom, had her surgery this week and did uh, quite well, and will be hopefully uh, discharged from the hospital on Wednesday, and uh, Garrett and Vera will be returning to the States next Sunday, I believe. So thank you for your prayers. Also, please pray for Bob Hamill, as who is having some medical issues this morning. He doesn't want uh, calls or visitors, but just prayers that uh, he he's okay. Other prayer concerns, celebrations. Of course, we remember uh, Reuben's good news of his his job as uh, as. Uh, Sarah goes wild back there and hand gyrations, but uh, that's a reflective of uh, a glad and grateful heart. Other prayer concerns that we would remember. I think we've heard for a long time Christians being victims in the world, but now in the Central African Republic, the Christians are actually massacring and killing Muslims, and we pray for that to cease. This is not. Peace in a very unsettled part of the world. Uh, Alan. Um, the prayer of thanks um, that uh, Rohan uh, came through his surgery well, and Lena and Rohan wish to thank everybody in the congregation for their courage and concern. We're glad that Rohan went back to school this week and has done quite well, and for his primary nurse uh, uh, and mom and chief supporter, Lena, as she has cared for him. We're so happy. Yes? Uh, I have a friend in Phoenix that the family needs prayers. Maggie, her 15-year-old grandson, committed suicide this week. He leaves a two-year-old daughter. Okay, please pray for Maggie. Sarah? We continue to pray for Carol McDonald and her family. Carol McDonald and the loss of her husband David, the pastor of Clayton uh, Presbyterian. That memorial service was yesterday, so please pray for Carol McDonald and her family. I have several things. Okay. We have five children. Amen. And four of them seem to have a problem this week. Uh -oh. uh, when it rains and pours, it all comes at once. Nothing really, really serious. Our granddaughter in Greencastle had a fainting spell, and they're trying to figure out what caused that. Our daughter and son-in-law in Atlanta are headed to Memphis because his parents are going to have to make a move. Mother has Alzheimer's, and it's, it's progressing faster than they expected. So they're going to be making some real decisions. Our grandson in Jasper, uh, I understand, has a, an infection in his leg. He's the grandchild that's in the wheelchair and has been for over 10 years. Um, and he's on an antibiotic. Rob is still in Afghanistan and is coming home, we hope, the first part of March. <clears throat> and I'm not sure. Something could be going on in Las Vegas for all I know. 
Mothers are the last to know. Most <laughs> people try to take care of themselves, which is good. Prayers for all. Yes. John. Yes, uh, I want to, uh, uh, on behalf of my parents, uh, Garrett and Vera, I want to, uh, they want to thank the congregation and, and everyone for their support and prayers and, and heartfelt concerns about Nora. And, uh, she's doing well. For 92 years old, it's, it's, it's a miracle. <laughs> thank you. Continued prayers for, uh, for Nora and for all. May we pray. You have blessed us in more ways than we can enumerate, O oh God. You have brought us out of the pitfalls and the potholes of life. You have given us life and prosperity, hope and encouragement. You have guided us when we have needed your wisdom and direction. Today, so many dot the landscape of our mind. And we ask that you be great physician, as you have so effectively in Nora's life, in Rohan's life, in the life of so many around us who have needed your constant care and guidance. Thank you for having been with Kathleen. Thank you, O oh God, for knowing that even untold difficulties, Maggie's loss of her grandchild, through such tremendously terrible news, surround them with your peace and your presence as you have the McDonald family. Surround the Lorimer children, especially, and grandchildren with your physical help and support and encouragement and strength and recovery. Our prayers not only are for those in close proximity, but those around the globe and across the ocean. And especially we would lift to you the tension in the world, worldwide, as even Christians become misguided and murderous. And we pray, O oh God, for your peace to reign and rule supreme in the lives and hearts of people worldwide. We pray for the well-being of all creation. We pray for this church and all churches that seek to do your will and preach your word and share the mission of Christ in the best that of our ability. Guide us, we pray, and continue to remind us we do none of that alone, but in the care of each other, and as a symbol of that care, we offer that prayer that you taught us as we pray together. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our tithes and offerings.
Give us the courage that we need to move beyond our comfort zones, to share with our brothers and sisters in faith, no matter where they live. Creator God, to this land of many people, you have called us from the four directions to be your church, to love, serve, and have courage in doing so. Grant wisdom, blessings, and peace to all of your people. Welcome us who welcome others in Christ's name, today and always. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is uh, Deuteronomy uh, 30 in uh, verse 15 to 20. In the Pew Bible in page 153 and in the other Bible uh, 313. The, the name of this uh, reading is The Offer of Life and Death. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing, the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live, and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Scripture continues in Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 21. Would you hear a word of hope for your life? Jesus speaking says, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka is answerable to the court. And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, and then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. 
It has been said anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say simply is yes or no, and anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Perhaps you made one of those calls this week. You know the ones. Perhaps it was a call to a business in which you were lost in a flurry of choices. If you want this department, press one. In that department, press two. The more sophisticated companies even extend that even further. If you're interested in one of these seven results, choose X. If you're calling for that purpose, choose Y. Our world has become so specialized now that it almost takes 16 people what one used to do and six departments what three used to do. One of the most challenging books of late was written by Leonard Sweet, a professor of evangelism at a seminary in New Jersey who wrote the gospel according to Starbucks. <laughs> Leonard proposes that Starbucks has taken the place in society and culture that was once occupied by the church. He claims you don't frequent Starbucks just for a coffee, but for an experience. At Starbucks are massive amounts of menu choices. In fact, Leonard's research indicates that with various sizes, flavor choices, and different ingredients, there are over 50,000 flavor choices that you might order. He says that people don't trade at Starbucks for a cup of coffee, but for the experience of being in the moment, in the place, which used to be the function of the church, that was performed regularly by offering choices almost for any age range on any given day or night choices. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The worst thing you can do is nothing. So says Teddy Roosevelt. And of course, Lewis Carroll and the Alice in Wonderland created the cat Cheshire Cat. This scene comes from that book. Alice came to a fork in the road. Which road do I take, she asked. Where do you want to go, responded the Cheshire Cat. I don't know, Alice answered. Then said the cat, it doesn't matter. <laughs> do choices matter? Do they really matter? Of course they do. Nothing could be clearer than from the verses of the Torah known as Deuteronomy, where we find God's final words to Moses as he prepares for death and the people prepare to enter the promised land. In that moment, they are put before them the choices and those choices were either life and prosperity or death and adversity. The choice was theirs. Make the correct choices and the future that they could look forward to. 
would be long and positive. However, the, long, the wrong choices would lead to a future that was numbered. Unlike many of the more mundane choices we make, large or supersize, fries or chips, water or diet, they were asked to choose to obey God's commands. They were to love God without measure, to conduct their lives with justice, kindness, and right living. Those choices centered upon how they treated the poor. One of the choices was to push the government to guard against excessive wealth, limit punishment to those who may have deserved death, offer hospitality to runaway slaves, pay employees fairly, and most importantly, leave a portion of the harvest for those who needed it most. The choices, those choices, would lead to life and prosperity and would be blessed by God. Those were the choices that were steeped in kindness, in generosity, in mercy, in goodwill. By choosing those, they were choosing lives of faith and in turn were to be rewarded with long lives. Almost as a last word and testament, a farewell address, if you will, Moses encouraged choose life. What do you think that admonition means to us, to you personally? In what ways must we make better choices? Could it include love God with soul, body, mind, and spirit? Might we embrace choices with others in mind? Perhaps for you, it means steering clear of the minutia that too often becomes enmeshed in our mind and in our calendar. Choose life by fighting for justice. Share food with the hungry. Quit doing what is only wasting your life. Stop arguing, criticizing, and blaming others. Tell the truth. Worship with your heart, your soul, your mind, not just when it is convenient, but every day as you awaken and then throughout the day. Choose life by seeing Christ and the people around you, even the ones that you feel are not up to snuff, spiritually in your own estimation, see that all of life is holy. Open your heart to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Choose life. From the very beginning, God created us in God's image with instruction to be fruitful and multiply. That we have done with out abandon. <laughs> We're to fill the earth and to subdue it. In essence, God gave us a decision in the role, a decision role in the created order. We were established as junior partners and subcontractors. In essence, God said, here is my creation, which is by no means finished. The raw materials are here. Now, go to work to complete this creation. Make it into a place where joy and peace and life might be possible. Practice justice, mercy, and compassion. You are responsible for what happens. So, choose life in every decision and attitude that you make. The only future will center on your choices, your decisions, your priorities, and make use of your creative powers. Choose life. 
Well, Jesus continues the Sermon on the Mount with specific examples of how to link our behavior with our beliefs and our attitudes with our actions. It was the late Bishop J. A. John A. T. Robertson who said that Holy Communion is simply making holy that which is common. In other words, our life in its totality is how we serve God. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount would complete the code, the instruction in Deuteronomy by saying to us, in what way do you choose to live life in your relationships. Well, rules were placed, were given for healthy relationships. But as they say, and as we know, rules were made to be broken. Well, in the sermon, Jesus ups the ante in relationships. He says, your ancestors put a prohibition on murder. I'll give you one better. Don't even be angry with another. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you know my brother-in-law? <laughs> well, I haven't bashed someone's head into a wall or slipped a knife between their ribs. That should be enough. Not so, says Jesus. The fact that you cannot stand your sister-in-law and treat her like dirt on a regular basis is just as moral of an issue as if you had taken a ball back to her. Indeed, you haven't murdered her by your anger, but you have murdered the relationship, slowly poisoning a sacred connection with the toxicity of your attitude. Adultery, lying, divorce. In all of these, Jesus looks, invites us to look underneath what is required to find instead what life is possible. The language about gouging out eyes and sawing off limbs is not an invitation to self-mutilation. <laughs> it's a reminder that being a person who chooses to give life to people in our relationships means that we often must tell the truth, sometimes do what is painful, or even remove parts of our lives that we have considered before, parts that we could not live without. Did you see the movie, 127 Hours? It's the true story of Aaron Ralston hiking in the Utah National Forest. Hiking along, his arm becomes lodged under a boulder where for days he tries to break through the rock and then finally to break his arm with a small knife. With life slipping away in desperation and courage, he breaks the ulna with the smaller blade of his knife, and he self-amputates his small his hand and, and forearm. It's a frightening, difficult to comprehend act. And yet, Jesus in these verses calls us to take our spiritual lives that seriously. What is the rock that is weighing us down? What is the attitude that is polluting our spirit? What is the poison that is challenging our relationships? The bottom line is how we must make better choices, the right choices in both scriptures. The path is by having a right relationship with God, which hangs upon having a right relationship with our neighbor. For the Hebrew to be instructed in their treatment of the poor, guard against excessive wealth, treat prisoners differently, offer hospitality to runaway slaves. Those acts must somehow be translated into our behavior today. 
Because Jesus clarified that adultery had to do with reducing someone to only a selfish act that is about you. And it begins in our heart. How often while waiting on a slow cashier do we breathe heavily, sigh, and roll <laughs> our eyes because the cashier is not serving us well. Is that not a form of adulterating the person and reducing him or her to that one act? Murder begins in our heart as well with the anger that wells up there. Jesus instructs us who divide our lives so effectively into those tiny, tidy segments. This is God. This is my work life. This is my drinking buddies. This is my family. And how we treat each of them is in turn how we treat God. It amazes me that I can offer the Lord's Prayer, forgive us, forgive me my sins, as I forgive those who've sinned against me. But I can leave that prayer and never really consider that my relationship with God is dependent upon my willingness, or not, to go clean up my lousy relationship with my sister and my former best friend, and so on. You see, the way that we choose to live life is a daily matter. Brian Hull Niebuhr argued in the irony of American history, nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, could be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. By love, no virtuous act is quite as virtuous from the standpoint of our friend or foe as it is from our own standpoint. Therefore, we must be saved by the final form of love, which is forgiveness. Amid culture wars, religious wars, Amid a generation not living in peace, we should take Reinhold Niebuhr's words and post them on our refrigerators. If we pass these words every day, perhaps we would be led to be more humble, a little less certain, and a bit more willing to listen to God and to value the people around us, perhaps. We might, with due diligence, choose life in all its forms. May we pray. You've called us once again to a higher purpose, to remind us what and who is important. Help us in all that we do and all that we say to choose life. Help us to make those choices now, today, that will affect who we are and our relationship with you tomorrow and the next day and the next. It is in your peace that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is 432, Song of Hope. Let's sing together. <clears throat>
choose the good, hold fast to God, so that you may flourish. And now may the wisdom of God, the love of Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit shine brightly in your eyes this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in.